Okay, can I find the sides, or the perimeter really, based off of just the area? The answer is yes. Uh, the math is a little complicated. It's not so simple. But uh, it basically goes around setting up the formula as I would before, uh, redefining how I view perimeter and apothem. So uh, those things are in play here. I'll do area equals uh, one half apothem times perimeter. But what I'm really going to do is say, okay, that's the same as apothem times perimeter divided by two. This is my area, by the way. Area. Okay, so I'm going to set it up in the same way that I've been doing them in other problems. I'm going to set this up um, uh, as a triangle here that I'm going to use the trigonometric functions to get it to work. So to move from this point, I need to redefine how I see things. The first thing I'm going to do is redefine perimeter. Uh, for this segment, or I'm just going to call this segment in terms of perimeter, I should say. I'm not redefining perimeter. I'm redefining that segment in terms of perimeter. The perimeter is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 lengths. And we'll call this a length that I'm just making up that L. Actually, let's just call it x. That'll be easier. <laughs> we'll just call that x. So 12x. So I could say that x is really p divided by 12. That's an important component. So that's what I'm going to use here in just a minute. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is look at, OK, well, what happens when I try to uh, define apothem in this problem? So I'll set this up as 23 point, oops, not that. I want to do it in a different color. 23, I still didn't do it, sheesh. So I'll multiply both sides by 2, of course, and end up with 46.8 equals apothem times perimeter. Now I want to be able to assign this apothem a value of something. So what I'm going to do is just redefine it, divide both sides by p, those cancel. Apothem is really 46.8 divided by p. That's what I'm going to work with. Um, so I'll write those over in the corner here. Apothem equals 46.8 divided by the perimeter. And x in this case is p divided by 12. So based on how that's all set up. This is, of course, 360 degrees here. So 360 divided by 6 would mean that each one of these isosceles triangles are 60 degrees. So this part here would just be 30 degrees. So I'm going to redraw this over here and say 30 degrees. Here's that. Oops. I'm trying to get my pen to pick up today. So I defined my value of this term as p divided by 12, and my apothem value is 46.8 divided by p. So where do I go from here? It's tangent, right? So tangent of 30 degrees is equal to opposite, which would be p over 12 divided by adjacent, 46.8 over p. Now, you can't have this kind of stacked fraction. So I'm going to do what I was taught to do um, in like the fourth or fifth or sixth grade when we divide fractions. I'm going to use keep it, flip it, switch it. I'm just going to go over here just to kind of keep it out of the way. p divided by 12 divided by 46.8 over p really means keep the first fraction, flip the second one, change it to multiply. So I end up with p squared is equal to 46.8 times 12.
So I'll stack all this back up here and say tangent of 30 degrees is equal to p squared over 561.6. Multiply both sides by 561.6. Now I should say, and I'm going to just go ahead and flip this one around, uh, you can go ahead and analyze tangent of 30 if you want. Make sure your calculator is in degrees instead of radians, or you'll get some wackadoo answer. Um, actually, I'll leave this as tangent 30 because it'll look prettier if I just write out. It still won't look pretty, but I'm going to do times 561.6 on both sides. And I get 324.6. Two, four. And really, I probably shouldn't round it as much as I did, but I'm going to leave it there. This is kind of a sloppy version. Um, now I need to take the square root to get p by itself, because the opposite of squaring is square root. So p is equal to, technically it's plus or minus, Eighteen point oh 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 six. So we'll just say eighteen point zero plus or minus. But in the real world, you can't have a negative perimeter. That makes no sense at all. So because of reality, I'm going to eliminate that possibility. Now you want to know the sides? Well, there's six sides. So if perimeter equals six times s. Perimeter is eighteen point zero divide by 6 on both sides, you're looking at a side value of somewhere around 3. Just to prove that I didn't just make all this up, the perimeter value is actually supplied in this problem. There you go, 18 miles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 3, and there you go. So it's a little bit more complicated, and it's really about taking what you know about math and redefining variables and terms that you need in terms of other variables so that you can do some uh, cancellation. So there it is, finding sides of a figure given only area.